Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm very excited to share with you an update about the chess.com new bot named Torch, which was implemented a few months ago and up to date has destroyed nearly everything in its path. Computer Chess Championship is going on right now and the bots on chess.com are playing rapid chess against each other, 10 minute chess. An AI playing 10 minute will play better than any human probably taking months to play a game. And that's why we're gonna be covering many of Torch's games and how it defeated the strongest bots in the world like Leela and Stockfish. And before we jump into the games today, this is not a sponsored segment, but it's October 1st. So happy October. Uh, there are three weeks remaining until this incredible book, well, it's incredible because I'm biased and I wrote it, comes out. Uh, many of you have pre-ordered it. In fact, 17,000 of you have pre-ordered it already. Some of you are getting a signed copy, some regular. Just want to let you know, this is available everywhere. So United States, in the UK, in Europe, in Germany, there's a German edition. There is a Spanish edition, si hablas español, uh, puedes comprar, comprar mi libro también. Uh, that's my little bit of Spanish there. Do pre-order it, please. Uh, it, we are hoping it doesn't sell out, uh, but uh, the more of you that do, uh, in all likelihood, this thing will come out as a New York Times bestseller already. I think over two or 3,000 just pre-ordered in the UK. So thank you all so, so much for your support. And for those of you waiting for it to come out for, and get it for Christmas, much love to you as well. Uh, three weeks remaining, I am so excited. All right, Torch versus Leela, Torch versus Dragon, Torch versus Ethereal, not Ethereum, and Torch versus Stockfish. Four incredible games of chess showing you different amazing flavors, textures, techniques. Sounds like a Gordon Ramsay episode. And I would know because I was in the season premiere of Kitchen Nightmares and I was called a food blogger. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Kitchen Nightmares out on Fox and Hulu. Pawn to d4. Pawn to d5. And to start out a video about AI chess, we have a London system being played by Torch. Now, the way bots are playing against each other nowadays is they both play a pair of games against each other with white and black, the same openings up until a certain point. And some of you requested that I, uh, I tell you when that... Uh, when the book ends and when the bots start thinking for themselves. Um, so knight to f6 played by Leela, e3, bishop f5. So the bots have been pre-programmed to play a London versus a London. Torch turns it back into a queen's gambit. c6, knight c3, and now plays queen b6. This is a bit of a provocative move by black. And as you can see, Stockfish, which is... Stockfish right now is basically watching two of its friends play Call of Duty and is like laughing at them because it has a better KD. Um, queen to d2, and now take, take, pawn to e6, and from this point forward, the bots are on their own. Now, already we have our first surprise of the game. If I gave you this position and I quizzed you, chess quiz, what is the most natural move here for white? Most natural. Not asking you to attack anything, some of you attacks. Most natural move is, of course, knight to f3, because you just develop in Newcastle. Torch, being rated 3,824, understanding chess better than we would if we lived another thousand years, plays here. The idea is that since white has two central pawns and black only has one, I actually want to play e4. So before it castles, it actually just goes f3 and e4. It doesn't even castle. It doesn't castle. It gets to invent its own rules and regulations and uh, frameworks in chess because it senses that due to its space advantage and Black's kind of Scandinavian Karl Kahn pawn structure, Black doesn't have a lot of space. Space are squares that you control on your opponent's side of the board. So, knight bd7, and now rather than short castle or even long castle, Torch just goes g4. <laughs> just g4. Now, g4 clearly has two ideas. Number one, if your opponent castles, they're going to castle directly into an onslaught. So that would be nice. Number two, you're actually just kind of threatening to attack these pieces. It's sort of difficult to move the bishop and the knight any further backwards, right? Now, black has to decide what to do. So Leela plays queen a5, trying to simultaneously patrol this rank, hit this diagonal, and maybe free up something on the b file. Torch just doesn't give... It doesn't give an f file. Just G <laughs> e4, g4, h4. Let's take as much space as possible. Now, pawn to h6, creating a getaway. And 
bishop to b3. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I like, I actually can't even explain it. Uh, Leela plays b5. And now, given the fact that Torch has pushed all of these pawns over here, it obviously casts... Okay, it, it chooses not to castle into the direction... There's no attack here, for the record. Zero. You block everything. It castles after advancing its own pawns. Okay, great. Then it slides the bishop to cover this diagonal, and then it puts its knight on f4 to try to break up black structure. At this point, Leela realizes it's in a bit of trouble, because if bishop h7, I'm just going to keep attacking. And then I'm going to go g6 as well. So instead of that, Leela fires back. Take, take... Cool, common, collected, best move in the position. Torch has seven pawns, a queen, two rooks, two bishops, and a knight. King to h1. Take, take, c5. You know what the idea was? You know what the idea of king to h1 was? Bishop g1. Why we had to go there and not there? I don't know. Queen b8. Unpinning the bishop. Uh, from from the queen and also trying to go here knight d5 I, I don't care you could trap my bishop go ahead you want to trap my bishop trap my bishop completely trapped the idea is knight e7 king e7 bishop h2 the queen moves let's say i don't know to b6 and now the bishop can get away and so bishop d6 played and now f4 all of the pawns are going forward bishop c2 back Pawn to e5, forking, queen a8, the counter shot from the opposite corner of the board. AI chess is ridiculous. We get the bishop, but we lose the knight. Now we trade the queens, and now we try to break apart the structure. The game has now transitioned from attacking chess into deep middle game and end game chess. We're going to grab that pawn on g6, and then we're going to anchor in the bishop on that square as well. Here, a couple of moves later, pawn to g5. Now, pawn takes, pawn takes, this is the position. All Torch has here is a pawn majority and bishops. The bishops are menacing. They are, li they are light speed, right? They can just go across the entire board, and the knight is being controlled. That's the most important thing about this position. Here, a very nice idea. Trading off the rooks, freeing up the mobility of these pawns. Now the rook can travel to the opposite side of the board whenever it wants. Hit this king. The king is severely restricted, and this king is completely safe because the bishop shields it. That idiot bishop. Now, at this point, Leela decides to give up this pawn. The idea is that now the knight can hit the bishop and transfer into white's position. Rook a8 check, forces the king up, bishop h5. Black comes in with rook d3, trying to get a fork. The king escapes. The rook pins the knight to the king. Now here comes pawn to f6, and torch is just too fast. c3, take... Take, stop the pawn while still applying pressure. The bishop cuts off the rook's vision of the pawn. But the idea is this and this. So if pawn to c2, you're just going to take, and then you're going to get the pawn. Bishop e7. And unfortunately, my friends, torch is simply too fast. f8 queen, forcing a removal over here. And this pawn is going to be the hero. That pawn is going to cut off all the king's oxygen. Rook c2, everything has been won. King f5, rook f6 check, no stalemate. And there it is. Torch won this game in a, just like from this position, seemingly out of nowhere, Torch just said 92, and then it just brought all of these pawns like an avalanche. And a few moves later, it castled that way, tucked its king on the opposite edge of the board, put the bishop next to the king, and just went for it. All the pawns. Incredible. Absolutely amazing game. Here's a game that it played against Dragon, and this also was a London, a slightly different one. Here, Torch actually played one of my course recommendations. I have a course on the London and the Trampowski openings, and against the move B6, I have this very fun line, Queen to F3. Now, here you will catch a lot of people pre-moving. A lot of people will pre-move bishop to b7, and you will simply win the game. Shockingly, that did not happen when the average elo of the players is 3,800, but it could happen if it's 3,000 points lower than that. So, queen f3 is not as stupid as it looks. The idea is to force black to block this diagonal, and then quickly castle queenside. So, for example, bishop b7, white can actually play d5, and also go here and then set this up. And uh, if, you know, if black is lazy and lackadaisical, you can play d5 very quickly, 
and then get some sort of position where you have very good pressure. It's actually a very interesting line. Uh, and I was very happy to see it being played in computer chess. Uh, and right around bishop b4 and then a3, the bots left uh, all previous territory. Black sends the bishop in to perish against the knight. You will again notice that white develops in a way where the knight goes to e2, but this time it's because there's a queen on f3. This pawn blocks the bishop, and basically white is arguing like, my queen is in a stupid spot, but it can quickly transfer to a useful spot. Your bishop is now in a stupid spot, and it can't transfer to a useful spot quickly. So... A3, take, take, and now both sides castle. Okay. Position obviously roughly equal. The first thing, the first alarm bell should now go off in your head. Opposite side castling probably is going to lead to attacking chess. And when computers play attacking chess, it's very fun. It's like when high-level athletes don't play it safe. Okay? You know, like uh, in, in, in mixed martial arts, for example. I'm a big fan of mixed martial arts. Those of you that watch me enough uh, know that. Um, high-level fighters sometimes try to just minimize their risk. But sometimes they just go at it, bishop to g5, clearly inducing this. And now we're not going for a little, you know, Oh, I damaged their pawn structure. I'm so clever. No. Bishop g5, induce this, h4. Fishing pole. Fish hook. When you have a rook and there's a castled king on the other side, you can give up a piece to open up the file and now you're winning. Black can't go here. Black can't move the knight either. Black moves the knight. It's actually mate in three. By force. Queen h5 does lead to mate, but it's not the fastest mate. Rook h8 is the fastest mate because it's a forcing move. Here, queen h5, queen h7. So, black can't take. Black can't take. But what black can do is ignore. Black can just be like, you're stupid. I'm not taking that. And now, Torch is like, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. They argue like toddlers. And now look at this repositioning. We went bishop here, induced this move, got the, the h-pawn there, queen slides over, now the bishop dances back to e5. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Now, my friends, you've been watching, and by the way, you may wonder why the bot would put the king here. It has a lot of options, um, but I guess it really didn't like that bishop d6 was going to happen, so it was like, I'm safe. The, the queen is guarding the knight. Look, you've been watching chess long enough. How does white progress with the attack here? How does white progress with the attack? The attack needs a little bit of a tipping point. We need a little bit more help. Rook h3 is not a crazy move, but you got to move the queen somewhere to put the rook there. Uh, knight e2 is a crazy move, because while you do this, you forget that your bishop has no escape, and now you lose a piece. And now you're no longer going to win, because this bishop was integral to your attack. So f4. f4. King h8. The rook comes to the f-file. The bishop slides backwards. And knight e7 prevents white from any advancement into the position, so white can now no longer play the move f5. So white's going to have to reposition and play the move g4. So, uh, Torch plays f5. Oh yeah. You know a move is good when Stockfish doesn't even realize it. Stockfish is sitting here recommending take and can be one preparation move. No, just f5. That's how you know you've messed up. When a move that you are uh, trying to prevent uh, just ca calmly happens. Knight f5. Queen f2. That was just a gluttonous pawn sacrifice. Now you have to live with the opening of the f-file. Okay? A couple of moves ago, the rook was dormant. Now a couple of moves ago, there is no f-pawn, but that is not the black's benefit because it just opened the position for white. Queen f2. Now the threat is here and here. That's it. The game is over. You have to stop that. If you don't stop pawn to g4 and then pawn to g5, you're going to lose because I'm going to get this too. So black plays h5. But now, take, and now I take this pawn. And now Torch is making this expert transition from middle game attack to middle game long-term advantage. Pressure on this pawn. Very difficult. If black goes g6, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going g4. You take my bishop, I take your knight. Okay? You take this, I'm going to get that and that and that. So queen h6, and now not defending the pawn on e3, but g4 anyway. Take, and now expert sliding the queen over. The idea is very simple. After take and take, black's knight is hanging, f7 is falling, knight g3 is a fork, but this is a major problem. All right? That's a major problem. So pawn to g6, take, 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 take. And now, my friends, Torch realizes it is down a pawn, but it is winning. It's amazing. Why is it winning? Because of that bishop and that's that wall of pawns. A long time ago, on like move four, we made a move that forced black to commit to the attack on this diagonal. Black went d5. 
We fast forward some 20 moves. We fast forward an entire middle game, and now we realize the bishop is completely sealed in, and it is going to get beaten up. And watch as Torch literally wins every single pawn. Every pawn is hanging around. Every pawn is difficult to guard. First things first, we win e6. Then we come back. We're going to trade rooks, and then we're going to win h5. While this bishop and these pawns are still standing here, look at Stockfish, doesn't even realize how dire the position is yet for black. White defends everything. White plays rook e5, threatening to transition into a winning king and pawn endgame. It's a very amazing move. Because after take, take, king e6, I would play h5. You take my pawn, I can't just run, but I play knight e3. You play king f6, I play knight g4. You stop the pawn, my knight is going to get in. And also I have h6 and then knight e5, because of the stupid bishop again. So rook h2, h5. Couple of moves later, white wins that pawn. Couple of moves later, black is going to win a pawn of their own, but look at black's bishop. That stupid bishop. h6. Rook c7. The pawns are going to fall. Why are the pawns falling? Because if, if you don't take the pawns, I'm just going to make a queen. So to create counterplay, dragon gives up its pawns. But torch literally wins every single pawn. Everything, every single pawn is stopped. This bishop plays absolutely no role in the game. And slowly, methodically, Torch marches forward, advances all of its pieces. That bishop literally was like just a, a, a ping pong ball this entire game. And Torch wins it in the center of the board. Look at the trajectory of that bishop. That bishop went to b7, stood there for the whole game until it was attacked, slid forward a square, tucked itself away behind a bunch of pawns. It literally did nothing tucked itself away, all the pawns proceeded to perish, when it was all already lost, it, it darted to the other end of the board for some reason, to d1, like this, and it ended the game on the other outskirts of the board, spectating and doing absolutely nothing on the h5 square, a move before checkmate. I mean, the bishop literally went here, 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 here. That's it. That's all it did. It did not participate, and, and Torch did this in a very strategic and methodical manner. Now, another game. This time, a Sicilian defense. This is against Ethereal, and like I said, we will end with Stockfish, which is the best computer in the world. Um, now, this one was weird. So this game had a very weird opening. D4, Bishop G4 pinning the knight. We take on C5. Black damages our structure by tripling our pawns now, undoubling them. And now we play a very interesting collinear move. A move on the same line as another piece, but instead of taking it, we just stop. We would like to get taken. Queen c8, knight g5, and now the bots are thinking on their own. Knight g5, of course, threatening on f7. Pawn, uh, knight to h6 defending. We kick out the bishop, and this is just a really obscure game. How does Torch handle a position that has no real structure? All right. H4, of course. <laughs> of course, right? Rook, pawn going to h5, opening up this. Of course, we have to go h4. Black plays queen c7, immediately trying to sneak into g3. Now it plays rook b1. h4 and rook b1. Two moves on opposite ends of the board. Forces black into a developing move. Now plays knight h3, undeveloping, and also hitting this knight. And black takes. Ethereal says, you know what? I want to remove some of your control over there. Uh, bring your rook out so now you can't castle and now I'm going to undevelop. You can win my pawn, but I'm going to catch up in my development and then I'm going to go rook b8. Queen g5, knight to h5 again, looking to probably build up something solid in the center. Torch plays bishop e2 and slides the queen here to h6. It's still a really weird position. It's like the sides are playing chess that doesn't make it. It's, it's like uh, when you have a fever dream. You have one of those dreams like your motor skills don't make any sense, like nothing makes sense, just gibberish. This is what this feels like. Like, what is going on, you know? It's like a Salvador Dali painting, except it's, uh, it's a chessboard. E5. Now we go here. We go here, I guess, to prevent knight to f4. Okay, this knight undevelops, trying to maybe go here and hit the queen. The queen's got eyes here, maybe queen c5 and queen in here. Now white plays bishop a3. With pressure on this diagonal. Black plays rook d7, making sure the knight is protected, and now white just walks the king out. Probably clearing out some space, probably trying to get the king to safety. I want you to keep an eye on this king. Just keep an eye. It just made one move. 
Black immediately plays f5, looking to put some pressure on this f-file. White plays bishop takes c7. The less pieces you have, the less of a chance you have of, of, of trapping one of mine. The other idea of this move is very sneaky. Obviously, it's to liberate the knight, but if, let's say, white plays king g2, black plays f4, and the queen is stuck. So if you play g4 here, I have, like, knight g8 and knight g3, and the, queen is, the queen's gonna really struggle to move. So bishop takes e7. Rook takes. E takes f5. Rook to, uh, queen to d7, because you can't take because you lose your knight. So queen d7. What is it? Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. You can't take on g6, because then you would be losing your rook. So seeing that that can't happen, Torch takes on g6, losing his rook. Wouldn't be a Gotham video if a rook wasn't sacrificed. The rook is completely hanging, but that move removed the defense. So queen h3, inviting in the queen for, for t. But queen takes h5, an immediate counter shot. And black on move 26 of this game, with the king stranded, with four pawns missing, no bishops and no knights. Castles. Oh yeah. Castles. Not only is the king safe now against checkmate, the rook sees this. Queen h2 is here. The rook can zip around this way. This is not a pleasant position, but Torch is very happy because it forces the rooks in front of the pawn, and now it plays c5. Rook on the board, queen on the board, pawn is knocking on the door, and it, all it wants, all Torch wants, is bishop here, which wins the game. It'll win the game. So king g7. Bishop c4 is now met with pawn to h6, kicking out the queen. So Torch adapts its strategy and plays pawn takes h7 check, and now the king uses the pawn as an umbrella pawn. If the king had taken bishop d3, king h8 leads to mate in several moves. You would lose all your rooks. So king h8, bishop d3, torches up a bishop and several pawns for a rook. Now, I told you, keep an eye on this king. Because now the game, after rook g7, queen f6, queen takes g3 and king e3, quickly goes to an endgame after a queen f4 check. Take, take, and now, not this. No, that's not the objective. The objective is to safeguard the king, sandwiched between pawns. The bishop will go there, we will take that, we will make a queen, king d4. Then, king c4. Bishop e4, pawn to c6, trying to make black choke on the pawn, and then the king would walk forward. It's just incredible stuff. Look at this. The king goes behind the pawn. The king gets safeguarded and then goes to d6. It went f2. I think it went to g2. G3, f4, e4, d4, c4. It just marches up the entire board. The king has taken the pawn. The king is now on b7. The pawn has a red carpet while this bishop is anchored, guarding that, forcing the king to be passive. And here comes here come white's pawns. Bishop d5, rook to b6. Of course, if you trade off the rooks, you're just in a winning endgame. Now we go directly to a winning endgame, but let's not forget that white still has an active king. That king is knocking on the door. Rook f8 check. King takes a5 is coming. And Torch meth methodically, slowly, forces black into total passivity. And now... Dancing around the inevitable, takes on a5, marches the king up the board, two pawns is two pawns too many, rook b6, I mean, black could have taken on f5, it's still totally lost, torch with a little bit of a sense of humor, rook c6, pawn to a7, promotes, and uh, checkmates with a rook, doesn't even need a queen, it knows how to checkmate with a rook, incredible stuff, that king walk was amazing, from a very obscure opening, to marching the king in this very odd middle game, to first to f2, then we skipped g2, we just went straight to e3, d4, c4, look at this, but just, it just realized it can use its king, it just, it just walked the king to the other side of the board, it's amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, we gotta end with Stockfish though. We gotta end with Stockfish, though. Uh, big shout out, by the way, seriously. I just look down. Like, everything in the, in the room now has a book. There's, there's this book. There's that piece of poster board. Those are a bunch of copies from the UK because they sent me 20 copies from the UK. This is the uh, English version. Uh, oh, I guess the, uh, the American version. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just check it out, y'all. Get it for Christmas. 
Ask your loved ones to get it for you for Christmas. It's going to be a great time. I, uh, I do appreciate all of you who have pre-ordered, which is about 17,000, which is incredible. In total, across all places and all editions, it's over 20,000. Amazing. Now, let's end with a bang. Stockfish plays a Benoni defense, a slightly obscure Benoni. All right, this kind of slightly passive structure. A4 preventing B5. Bishop D3, let's see how Torch handles this. Oh yes, it's already getting spicy. Pawn to g4, negating the development of the bishop and pressuring the knight to go backwards. Knight bd7, g5, knight g8 would be brutal. So h6. Now we develop, covering more light squares, and we trade off black's light squared bishop. Why do we trade off black's light squared bishop? Because that bishop wants to participate. That bishop is stuck. Look at this bishop. Look at all of these dark squared pawns. That bishop is playing a very low role in this game. It's going to be very tough to develop. And then Torch took this knight. This was a crazy move. I would, I would never in a million years. Never in a million years would I play that move. Never. That is an insane move to me. You just told me you want to trade and put a knight on f5. Why on earth would you do this? You can't even win this pawn with queen d3 because black plays king f7. That's what happened in the game. I would stop right here. I would go, why would I do that? The rook is going to come here. The knight's going to reroute. Torch is like, okay, show me. Show me. Okay, you think the knight is going to reroute, right? Look, look, you did everything. You're even giving me this pawn because knight e5, knight f3 check. Guess what? Torch says, okay, I like free pawns. Stupid stockfish. Knight e5, check. King slides to h1. And Torch is like, look, Stockfish, you're just down a pawn. You're just down a pawn. I'm better here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this knight, and I'm going to push. At some point, I'm going to play f4. Guess what? I got a rook coming from that angle. Rook a3. Take, take. The knight's going to move. You don't want to move the knight? I'm going to hit your queen. You don't want to move the knight? Now you got to move the knight, because I sealed off everybody's defense. Get out of here. Nice. Now watch this. Knight e6. I'm giving up my knight. For a pawn. You can't take it though, because then I would pin your knight to your queen. Stockfish is like, you idiot, what about queen g6? Now if take, then take. We go to a rook and knight endgame. George is like, got no plans for an endgame. I gave up that pawn on e6 so that I had pressure on your pawns, your backwards pawns, which can't make any progress, and I have a majority here, and I have attacking possibilities. We play pawn to f5. We bring our rook. We reroute the knight again to that same e6 square. Rook to g3, knight to f8, rook d3. We're attacking those pawns. Those pawns are soft. b3, and now Stockfish can't handle this anymore. Stockfish is not very good at sitting around and getting toyed with. It sacrifices a pawn for activity. Once again, Torch calls its bluff, and now Torch makes a gangster move. Remember collinear moves? Moves on the same diagonal. This hits this and this. So what do we do? Queen to c6. What a move. Idea very straightforward. We want to eat all of these pawns, one by one. And we want to trade queens, but on our terms. And our next move is knight to d5. That's our next move. Rook d6, knight d5, we're in good shape. Rook c8 played, now we trade, but a massive difference. See, this, this knight d5 does not prevent rook takes. Because there is no knight d7. Actually, I take that back. It does prevent that, because if you go here, then there's knight c7. But for some reason, Torch forced it, its, its opponent to play rook c8. The only thing I can imagine is that now, after this trade, the rook is passive. It forced Stockfish, I guess, to get off the e-file. I guess that's it. That's so wild. But I, I don't understand because now you can play c4. I don't, I don't get it. I tried to explain. I don't even know. I'm in awe just like you are. Look, there's pawn to c4. You would think I was trying to prevent that. But look at this. Rook e1. And now... Watch how effortlessly Torch beats Stockfish in this endgame. It's just, it's just awesome. Knight e4, it just gets the pawns. It starts bringing its king. That knight on d6 defends absolutely everything. Let's trade some rooks. I'm going to advance effortlessly. Pawns, king, another king walk. Very simple transition to an endgame. And there's bad manners coming up. You ready? Watch this. Rook h7, b6. Black attacks the rook. Oh, I love this moment in this game. Of course, any human being on the planet. Rook d7, that rook to d7. Moving the rook literally anywhere on the board that doesn't lose a rook. And Torch ends the game by 
Bad manners versus stockfish. Rook to e7 check. Giving up the rook for no reason. No reason at all. But there is a reason. You know what the reason is? Because after take, take? Black's rook cannot stop both pawns at the same time. It can't. It has to be on the eighth rank. It cannot stop one pawn from there and from there. But it matters which pawn you push. You have to stop rook e8. Pawn to f. Look at that. That is just. These bots have a sense of humor. Check. Check. And now, if king f2, that's probably the best move. The bot likes king g2 even better. Rook e5, it makes a queen. And unfortunately, it's going to make a second one. I wish it promoted to a rook. And now, the best mathematical technique possible deflects the king to the back rank. Queen c7 is made. Just awesome. Just like so effortless from like this position you know slightly better for white black is quite passive not down a pawn and just just destroying in multiple ways end game grinds this game like absurd king walks to the opposite ed edge of the board this game was amazing weird slightly weird opening monstrous attack transition to the end game winning all of its opponents pawns and this this i mean this was just the terminator just one like the terminator just awesome awesome 3,824 rated and rapid. What more do you want, you know? What more? I, I you know, I, I, I don't know what more. I'm going to go enjoy my Sunday. You all have a great Sunday. Whenever, whatever you're watching this in the future, 2024, 2027, let me know how many subs there are on the channel. Uh, you all have a great day. Get out of here. Thanks so much for pre-ordering the book. And if we're far ahead into the future, uh, thank you for ordering the book, period. Or any, any form of support. You know? Thank you. Now get out of here.